Wild caught cardinal tetras versus farm raised fish. Which is better? In today's video, I want to share with well, you. That's an easy one. You know how many issues there are with farm raised fish? And do you realize how many fish there are in the wild? Like, seriously, how many fish there are in the whoa, wild? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do not even care about the environment. Buying fish from a farm is much more sustainable. The fish are hardier, and it's clearly much better for the environment. Cardinal tetras? Who cares? Man, Who get is that, that guy, guy out of okay, here. Okay, okay, okay. Listen, both of you guys, both of you guys, and you in the house too, get out of here. They're right. Anyways, I was going to say, today I want to share with you guys something that I just learned. If you would have asked me a few weeks ago, farm-raised cardinal tetra versus wild-caught cardinal tetra, I would have had a different opinion than I do now. And I feel like after watching this video, your opinion may change as well. So I want you to go ahead and leave a comment down below what your opinion is before and after watching the video. I touched upon this in a recent video when we were going over my cardinal tetra tank. Yeah, this one right here. And I mentioned that my opinion changed after watching a podcast, actually the Aquarius podcast with uh, Randy, and he had a guest Scott Dowd on, and it's about Project Piaba. You may have heard about Project Piaba due to all the Aquashella donation videos going around, and we're gonna touch upon that later in this video, but the main focus is gonna be Project Piaba itself. So if you wanna learn what Project Piaba does, how you can help save fish and trees in the Amazon rainforest, and you like plot twists, then make sure you watch this entire video. Seriously, there's a plot twist in this video. And hopefully this video gets the word out a little more and shares the information, and if it doesn't change your mind like it did mine, at the end of the day, at least you have the full information. So, what was my opinion beforehand? If you would ask me a few weeks ago, Ryan, should we collect wild fish? What's better, you know, wild versus farm raised? I wouldn't have told you that wild fish is terrible, but I would have said, yeah, farm raised makes sense. Let's not destroy the Amazon. Let's not destroy these places by, you know, tearing out the fish, tearing out the trees, tearing out every resource. But after listening to Scott Dowd talk about how it really works and how harvesting fish and uh, an ornamental fish trade actually supports a community and can actually save, it is actually saving the native fisheries, it changed my mind. And you still may be thinking, well, how does that make sense? Just because it supports a little bit, it gives them a little bit of money in their pockets, that's, that's not enough, you know, who cares? There's more. Scott does a great job on the podcast explaining everything in detail. I'm gonna try to keep it short today, so I definitely urge you when you have time, go ahead and watch the podcast. Podcast pro tip. I watch my podcast usually at 1.5 or 2.0 speed. It doesn't work for all podcasts, depending on the speaker and other things, um, but give it a try. All the Aquarius podcast episodes are on YouTube, which I'll link below, and they're also wherever you can find, you know, wherever you get your other podcasts. Who is Scott Dowd, what is he doing, and why does it matter? First things first, he's a fish geek just like you and I. He actually started volunteering at the New England Aquarium as a teenager, and he's currently, I believe, the lead conservation biologist as well as the executive director of Project Piaba. So New England Aquarium up in Boston area, I believe, Massachusetts, and Project Piaba, which is dealing with the Rio Negro region and Amazon. How did that happen? Well, Scott traveled there as a teenager and saw, you know, he fell in love with aquarium fish and he saw all these fish being transported out of the Amazon. And his first thought was the first thought I had, and it was, oh my gosh, this is terrible. Like, I love these fish, now we're, we're, we're taking all these fish out of the Amazon. And then he discovered what he shared with me via the podcast, and I'm about to share with you right now. During the wet season in the Amazon, it gets very, very rainy, and the, the, rain, the water rises, and there's plenty of vegetation. Now, come dry season, cardinal tetras and many other fish in the region will die. The vast majority of them will die because the dry season comes, and there's little, little water left, and the reality is of only a small percentage of fish survive during these drastic periods, okay? And what the fisheries do and what Project Piaba is training these fishermen to do is identify when the best time to collect these fish is, and that's first things first. So that way we're harvesting these cardinal tetras at a point in the season where the mass majority of them would be, you know, would perish anyway due to nature and the normal process of how things work. So it's not just sustaining local communities, it's actively working to ward off other sources of income, whereas if there was no need to harvest these fish, this land would be turned into, you know, perhaps gold mining, it'd be harvested for timber. Project Piaba actually conducted a poll to ask the fishermen what they would do if they could not collect the fish anymore, and these are the exact things they would they stated, as well as they would just, you know, migrate to urban areas. And it's not just cardinal tetras that benefit, there's 
tons of other tetras and other species of fish, but we're also talking about there's dolphin species and other birds and you name it, thousands of different species of animals that are saved and their habitat is protected because these cardinal tetras are essentially worth their weight in gold and worth to maintain this habitat. Fun fact, piaba is actually a local Brazilian word for the aquarium fish and it's a slang term meaning like little pipsqueak. Now that we know that harvesting wild cardinal tetras can actually be not only sustainable, but beneficial to the local economy and habitat, you know, how can we make that better? And how do we make sure that that happens instead of fishing every single wild cardinal tetra? And that's what Project Piaba is working on. So essentially they've teamed up and they have a lot of people on the ground. They're helping organize the fisher, uh, the fishermen and fisherwoman, fisherwoman? The piaberos, that's the local term. They call them piaberos. They also work with uh, scientists. There's a lot of that involved to make sure that the fish are being healthy. That's a big part of it, guys. So they're seeing a lot of decline in the demand for fish. So they're thinking, okay, what are we doing? Maybe we do have to migrate to urban. Maybe we do have to go mine gold or, you know, perhaps this, this area is going to be mined for its, its timber. And the reality is some of these wild caught tetras, the journey they take, it's really hard on them. It stresses them out and they are just poor condition. So Scott and Project Piaba are working on ways to collect the fish um, a lot more, you know, so less, less stressful on the fish and transport them better and make sure that they're hardier, make sure they get fed and just working on this, you know, all these different collection points. You can imagine, you know, the amount of uh, steps on this journey they take to get to our fish tanks. My call to action to you is just to share this information and share Project Biaba. You know, I'll put a bunch of links down below. You can check out more information. You can go to your local library and check out this book. Uh, a big shout out to Randy and Scott for, um, for making me get I don't have an on my wallet on me. I was gonna break out my library card. I'll put a picture of my library card. First library card I've had since I was a kid. And first time I've actually, you know, got a, a book um, since uh, college out of a library. So pretty cool. You know, I've been in, I've been in libraries since, since then, but it was pretty neat to get there and, you know, uh, rent out a book and just see, you know, just, it was cool to be in the library. You know, it's kind of geeky, but you know, the woman who checked me out kept the beta and this is a juvenile section book. And I felt a little embarrassed that, you know, I was in the juvie section, but it's full of really cool colors. I, I, I read through it. It's, it's a really neat book. And um, like I said, if you don't, you know, you can definitely purchase it. I'm sure it's on Amazon and every place, but go check out your local library. Not only does it have the adventure, it has some really cool facts. I'm a big fun fact guy. I think my favorite fact from this, I only share one and let you guys discover the rest, but there are 50 or 5,600, 5,600 known species of fish in the Amazon River. In the Mississippi River, there are 250. Back to the Aquashella donation portion of the video. If you guys aren't familiar already, Aquashella is going to be a aquarium convention, both saltwater and freshwater. It's uh, the second time it's being held. This year it's gonna be in Dallas, March 30th to 31st. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it. Uh, I'm gonna try, I, I really wanna go to a convention. I've never been to one. I kinda wanna geek out. Um, if you've never been to one, I'm sure you feel the same way. But Aquashella and some fish tubers out there put together this competition slash you know, charity event slash get the word out marketing about Aquashella. Um, and they're going to take the funds that are raised from the raffle. It's gonna be between 20 and $40,000 and put it towards um, one of two charities. One thing I do wanna mention is that I believe in the state of Texas Texas, monies from a raffle legally has to go towards a charity and in this case Aquashella is choosing to donate the proceeds of the raffle to St. Jude's unless someone like you or me makes a video and then FishTube has allocated you know that money each video $100 will go towards whoever you select and that would be uh, Project Piaba for Freshwater or the Coral Restoration Foundation for Saltwater. Corey over at Aquarium Co-op had clarified that in his live stream so thank you for that. I'm really excited to see our hobby growing and I'm proud to be part of the growing community here on YouTube. I've watched a lot of the Aquashello donation videos and I've seen a lot of people kind of come out of the woodworks, haven't put out videos in a while. So I think that's kind of a cool side effect of this as well. But now what you guys have all been waiting for and I want to get to which charity I'm going to select. Plot twist, I'm going saltwater. Wait, huh? I told you.
That's right. I'm going to pick the Core Restoration Foundation. To be honest, I don't know much about the foundation. Like I said, I trust the guys putting this together. You know, I think their hearts are in a good place. I, you know, I, I want to do some more research in um, into the foundation. Um, I live here in Florida. I'm actually also a certified scuba diver, and I want to keep some saltwater tanks one day. And I actually, obviously, think P Project Piaba is a great. Um, cause worthy of support and that's why I made this video dedicated to them um, I want to donate um, the money from this video to the the fund I'll put links in the description down below how you can do so it's not gonna be a ton of money I'll probably try to add some more on top of that but my call to action to you guys is is not necessarily to donate it's just to get the word out and I don't mean share this video I just mean you know share the information share the website share the podcast share someone else's video that you know explained it better I think the the, the big thing is you know giving people the information and letting them understand you know and letting them decide maybe your opinion was changed maybe it wasn't hopefully you have some new information let me know in the comments down below what you thought what you think now i appreciate you guys watching go support project piava any way you can as always stay positive and stay passionate